Thank you for joining us for this episode of Travel with Val. Today's episode, Renovate Your Roots, Buying Property in Italy. Today on the show, Daniel Scioletto, President of D&G Property Advice in Milan, as well as past President and current Vice President of the British Chamber of Commerce of Italy. And Nicola Nick Maria Meta, an Italian property lawyer with Studio Legale Meta, speaking with us from Bari. And of course, travel journalist Valerie Delia is our host. She was formerly with New York One News and is and always has been captivated by the charms of her Italian ancestry. Valerie and the panel will be taking questions from viewers, so take a moment to pop your questions and comments in the chat. And now, with no further ado, Valerie Delia, take it away. Grazie, grazie. It is uh, so nice to be back with you. Uh, this is our fourth um, live stream uh, since the pandemic. Uh, we took a break uh, for the summer, and I hope that everybody had uh, had a very nice summer. And it's uh, hardly believable that it is now um, October. And I wanted to bring this particular webinar together uh, because it seems as if um, interest in Italy is even stronger than it was before the pandemic. Although sadly, Americans are not allowed uh, to fly there because uh, it's one of the EU countries that won't let us in. And I had all plans to uh, be in Italy as of last April. And uh, my plan was to buy and to renovate a home and to do a television program about it. So this is why we're bringing together a very uh, esteemed um, couple of um, experts who will be with us. And I'd like to introduce them now. And it's uh, starting with Daniel Shilito. He is the president of D&G Property Advice in Milan. And he is the um, past and current vice president of the British Chamber of Commerce for Italy, Dan Chow. And you are in Milano right now. How jealous am I? <laughs> I am indeed. Hi, Val. It's great to be here. I'm definitely in Milan and I've been here for around 10 years or so. And you can tell everyone can tell from my accent. <laughs> <It's incredible. laughs> not, not for my whole life, unfortunately. But yes. make me totally jealous that you are completely fluent in Italian. Well, I say to my best friends, that's the only way I can really converse properly with the in-laws. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense, smart guy. So quickly, we're also going to now bring in Nick, Nicola Maria Meta. He said, we'll just call me Nick. And it's like, you have to say that beautiful name. And uh, Nick is an Italian property lawyer with Studio Legale Meta. And uh, he is speaking with us from another one of the world's most gorgeous places, Bari, which to me has the home of the uh, best linguine alle vongole I have ever had. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick, uh, benvenuto. Thank you so much. Grazie, Val. It's very nice being here. Thank you so much for um, the opportunity. I'm really excited and uh, without further delay, uh, more than happy to dive in in this uh, exciting conversation about buying properties in Italy and uh, share knowledge and experience with uh, Daniel, a um, person I've, be, I've had the, the pleasure to work with in the past as well. So it's, it's very nice. Thank you so much. And I have to thank both of you for uh, coming into my my orbit um, because um, I, I think it was through um, LinkedIn and uh, the fact that I'm I'm buying and hoping to renovate a home for the television program and something extraordinary um, happened where I received a grant from the famous Russo brothers of the Marvel um, Marvel uh, movie fame and they do something in association with NIAF the national um, Italian American Foundation every year they have a contest and I was one of seven people who was awarded uh, a grant uh, to put a documentary together Fantastic. And, yeah and I, I was just bowled over Congratulations. Um, I, thank you very much um, it is uh, fabulous prestige wise it's it's definitely a help when it comes to financing this and it actually turned into a documentary. Uh, my, my first hope was to put together an episodic series. And uh, this is going to be something that's about an hour long. And as soon as I get to Italy to buy this home and to renovate this home. So the first thing that I want to do is show a sizzle reel for the idea that I had that the Saving Southern Italy documentary 
was uh, hatched from. It was actually something called um, Renovate Your Roots and as an episodic series. And this is just kind of a branch of that. So the first thing we will do is we will show that uh, that sizzle reel in just uh, a couple of, uh, of minutes um, or so. So, but in, in general, what scares me is the fact that I was reading from you, Dan, um, that it takes quite a while to do this, to buy and to renovate. And I don't see myself getting there, honestly, to Italy until, let's say, um, April. Mm. So how am I going to be able to turn around this documentary? Not only do I have to buy and renovate my house, but a big... Um, focus of this webinar is to find people who want to do what I'm doing as well, that they want to do, they want to save Southern Italy, all these abandoned villages and people who want to buy and renovate. So I am looking for people and maybe you two can help me. And do you know of any people who are doing that right now, doing the same thing that I intend to do, buy and renovate homes in the land of uh, their ancestry? And am I gonna be able to pull this off by, uh, by the end of August? Can I do this April, May, June, July, and August? What do you think? Well, um, I think you've got a little bit of a challenge in, in time. It doesn't mean it can't be done. Um, but I think, you know, this is an opportunity to, to let everybody be aware that buying in Italy is a process that doesn't have the same timelines that uh, you might expect from, from where you come from or where you bought property before. So in Italy, um, there is no set time frame. Every purchase can be different. Some purchases can take can be done in 60 days or 90 days. Uh, and many others might take on average around four or five or six months. It really does depend on the circumstances of the seller, uh, and the readiness of the, of the documentation to sell the property and transfer the title legally. Um, and those are some things that you only discover during the process of buying, to be honest with you. So it's a case by case proposition. Um, so I'm not the kind of person that makes uh, guarantees or promises that things can happen in short uh, time frames. So I don't know if Nick might want to add something to that. Yes. Um, okay. We're starting to get some um, comments in uh, right now from uh, my friend Blaine Zuver. Blaine, welcome um, to the program. He said that's very interesting. Uh, Blaine is an expert in adventure travel. So I think that this could also be a very adventurous uh, uh, undertaking for me, for sure. And of course, um, my heart just is, gets so full when I see a Casaria join our program. Lucia Casaria is one of my Italian sorelle. I have I have no real sisters in my life. I have three, uh, two brothers, but Lucia is one of the Castelfranchese uh, sorelle, the sisters from my little village. Um, and I want to welcome you, uh, wow. Lucia. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. And uh, there's uh, just a beautiful place that, as uh, Jose said, that has really captured Activated me, and it's such a, a warm part of my my life. And uh, what, one interesting thing about the places in Castel Franco is that I was told that if there are homes that are abandoned and they've been abandoned for a certain amount of time, they actually can be transferred for one dollar. Have you ever heard of that? Absolutely, they can. That's part of the Casa Unero program that is sweeping the country and has done since 2018 and early 2019. Okay, um, so that would be one in the same. It's just a dollar transfer there. Okay, so that is yeah. part of the Euro program. Okay, yeah. is that only if they're abandoned though? Or I, I is that how that works? Well, well I think um, you find houses in all kinds of, of, of states. Uh, some of them are abandoned, some of them are still with their owners, but their owners have long left the comune. And I think at the moment there's at least 20 different regions or smaller mm -hmm. regions within regions uh, that have these kinds of houses available um, where the comune has created this opportunity for foreigners to come in and buy very cheaply. Of course, the biggest thing you need to be aware of is that the, the headline sells itself that it's one euro, but in actual fact, the cost to to get involved and to put down the required deposits to pay some uh, a fee for for a real estate agent to be involved and other costs start to 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 build up. So you have to go in with your eyes open. You also have put down a deposit, um, isn't that true? And then you have uh, three years to 
uh, to do the renovation work and to buy the property. So we're going to talk, uh, we're going to see coming up um, uh, uh, more about the Casa Une Euro program, which, yes, was really, really well publicized in the past year or so. Um, Dan, do you think that it is uh, even more popular now than it was uh, before the pandemic? Look, I think there's still evidence of a lot of interest. People people are interested. Um, and I, to be honest, personally, I think since the pandemic, when there's this, uh, people are reassessing where they want to live, you know, how they want their lifestyle to be. Do they want to continue like they were before the pandemic or do they want to change something about their lifestyle? And I think some people might be accelerating their plans or their big ideas to to leave where they're living now or even even some people from leaving big cities within Italy and going to a smaller region perhaps in, in starting renovation. So I think the interest is there. Uh, I think definitely, of course, the pandemic slowed everything down completely and the programs were virtually stalled through from March to, to July. But I know in at least a few um, regions they've started up again in July. Yeah. Okay, and just like New York City, a lot of people are moving out and moving to um, the suburbs. Um, and is it the same in Italy where people are leaving the, um, the big cities like Rome, Milan, um, for instance? Nick, you could chime in on this too because well, I, of I the have pandemic. Seen, yeah. I've seen him amazing. Yes. I, and I'm sorry, there is some delay, so I'm sorry my sound that I'm... Uh, writing uh talking over you I, I really apologize for that so um yes I, it is amazing how destinations outside the uh cities are getting more popular more desirable i read an article there has been a um, 30 percent increase in uh holiday rental this summer and uh, the expectation is that uh, there will be a much stronger demand for homes in um areas that uh uh, usually doesn't have so much attention. So, um, and this is just based on some articles I'm reading about stats and because uh, I'm also a real estate investor. So I like to invest in real estate, I invest in the US, I invest in Italy. And I like to compare the, the dynamics of the two countries and, uh, and the differences as well. That helps me also when advising clients um, in the process and uh, with the legal aspects because the, the systems are so different, right? The common law versus civil law. But to go back to your question, definitely there is much stronger demand. And uh, um, I personally spend every summer uh, with my family. I, I take my family to Italy. And this year I heard that all, and I um, renew my, my reservation and my booking one year, like uh, September for, for the next summer. This year, uh, they told me they, they had the whole, all the typical villages were all sold out already by May, whereas usually in late June, July, you can still find places to stay. But uh, yeah, definitely mm -hmm. coronavirus has changed the dynamic of how people are going to travel and spend their holidays. Do you think this will strengthen the Casa Une Euro program or do you think there will be more market value for uh, these homes that are for sale in these abandoned villages? Either one of you can chime in. <laughs> <laughs> many, many people think that uh, who, yeah, many people th think that uh, the, um, pe the people who have invested in the Casa, the, uh, the houses for one euro, um have done the right thing because their equity is going up all these villages first of all their equity is going up because the casa uno is driving more attention more economy more people who who are going there to offer services to the buyers so definitely there is already um the result of the 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 reason why they started the program which was like uh stimulate the local economy mm -hmm. and then on top of that coronavirus has just given a boost to the whole program and so um i've seen many clients are uh, buying in smaller villages and also because the italian government has added another program on top of everything else which is if you move from overseas to a small village under twenty thousand people population then and if you are a retired person your pension is taxed at only seven percent 
uh, versus the Italian brackets starting at 23%. So that also has attracted attention, has brought attention to smaller villages. And uh, so, you know, all of these programs, all of these dynamics are definitely going to uh, um, help getting more interest uh, outside of city and in the countryside and small villages. Okay, in our village, as you'll see in this upcoming sizzle, um, we do not have the Casa Una Euro program, but I, I'm now remembering that there was also uh, something brought up that said, um, this is an abandoned house, but so it'll be zero for you to, if you can just find the person who owns the title to it and they can transfer it to you. And then you don't have to go through the Casa Un Euro official program and you can do, just do that between two of you. Is that true? Either of you guys? Can I well, just find definitely, the person who owns? Um, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, and as Daniel said earlier, um, the Case Uno has, is now kind of the headline for um, mm -hmm. every situation where there is uh, um, real estate that really doesn't have any market value and sometimes actually represents burden to the either the owner or the local mm -hmm. um, administration because it's a concern for a municipality to have a neglected property. You know, uh, pieces of wall stumps crumbling down. Guess who has to take care of it if you don't know who the owner is? Well, the municipality. They have to front the money. They have to make the repair. They have to uh, fence the area. They have, you know, all of that is taxpayers' money. So mm -hmm. that's why in many of these programs, the promoters, the initiative has been taken by actually the commune, the local municipality. They want somebody to come take care of that burden and take that off of their shoulder. So sometimes it's one euro and they say, well, you find it, but sometimes they do the work for you. They go through their super old archives and see who was the original old owner, who are the heirs now after who knows how many generations. And uh, one way or the other, they try to help you out sort uh, through the uh, paperwork and finally get a um, ownership. And as Daniel said, it is not always easy. It is pretty tough. So they first find somebody who is interested and willing to mm -hmm. commit time, not so much money, but time. And then they, uh, they, I've heard stories, they basically cut all the red tape, you know, and uh, they try to streamline the process, but there's still a ton of paperwork. Okay. Well, let's welcome a few more of our um, visitors and uh, Carmela Casaria, this is the poor woman, I think, who might be sorry she ever met me. This is my fourth cousin uh, <laughs> from Castelfranco in Miscano, and she is just, uh, we call her the queen of Castelfranco. She helps with our, not helps, she, she practically runs these roots trips. Um, I just bring the people over there. She makes it all happen. And um, she is now involved in my project to uh, buy a home and saving Southern Italy. And I, she's now my producer. And she is just uh, so much fun. And I welcome wow. you, Carmela, as always. And she's one of my four sisters in, in Castelfranco. But uh, there's, there's, I'm always up to something with her. And she's always rolling her eyes like, what do you want me to do now? But she goes <laughs> along with all of it. And she's just uh, such a doll and so smart. And uh, Carmela, you know how much I love you. And uh, Deborah Paoletti Marino, very interesting. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. And if you have questions, anybody in the comment thread, please, um, we'd love to hear your questions. Uh, Lucinda, I and her own Ames. Lucinda and I go back to the days when my parents had a travel agency in Trumbull, Connecticut. And um, she said, I was hoping to visit Italy now that I have retired, but coronavirus got in the way. So I'm interested to see when that could happen. We, we all are and surprised about the villages drawing such interest during this pandemic time. Um, yes, I, I'm happy though, uh, Lucinda, that, that they are because I know that uh, when I was covering the coronavirus um, for months um, with We the Italians, Umberto Mucci, um, it was 
the villages and the small areas of Italy that weren't hit as hard. It was the northern uh, part of Italy that was hit the hardest um, with COVID. And mm. um, let's uh, say hi again to Blaine. Professional people planning to work from their homes in these villages will need high speed internet access. Is that always available? That's an excellent question. I know that Carmela has uh, one of the only internet in, in her bar, Bar Capricci, and also in her uh, bed and breakfast that she um, renovated. So, but it certainly is not available all over this small village. So what do you guys think? No, well, I think that uh, internet coverage has improved immeasurably in Italy over the last three years or so. Prior to that, it was quite patchy when you got out of the big cities. So I think that there's a greater chance now that you're going to find reasonable working internet. But really, like the houses that you're looking at, it's a case-by-case -case basis. So there's no substitute for inquiring exactly where, working out first where you want to be, where you plan to do the renovation and understanding from the locals there and the telecommunications company that you want to deal with above all what their coverage is like and how it works and if they've got a, a, a station within the area that you can, can make it fast uh, as fast speed as you need and nick how about you can you chime in and on that if i if i may yes i um you know we as i shared uh, privately with you i just uh uh my wife and I decided to to do a one year in Italy. So we just moved uh, a few weeks ago. And one of the things when you have teenagers in the house, even for <laughs> our daily life, you need internet, right? So um, uh, Italian providers are not exactly famous as fast as Americans are used to. You know, in, in the US, you make a phone call within minutes, you get your, your, your internet connection and everything, right? Uh, well, I, I discovered to my uh, pleasant surprise, I walked into uh, one of many uh, um, uh, mobile phone stores, uh, mobile provider uh, stores in the city, and I just bought a cube. Now they sell these cubes. You just plug it in and it is instantaneous. It worked. I paid $100, 100 euros, and I got unlimited data and it's 4 plus G. So it, it's super fast, super good. Granted, I am in the city, so there is probably better uh, mobile cover, good mobile coverage. But if you can get uh, mobile coverage in the small village, you see you can check what um, provider covers that area probably better, and uh, you might get a cube. <laughs> And you know, I'm just thinking now about Carmela's bed and breakfast uh, where she has the internet access. And when it went out uh, the last time I was there, the coolest thing was like our whole place is renovated. It's beautiful. But then you go up into the attic and it's got the dirt floor. And it was just like so cool to be up there and to see where, you know, so I don't know, the whole thing just really, really turns me on. So I want, now is a really good time to segue um, to the video that I put together. You will see uh, Carmela and some of the other stars of, of my village, stars of my program. Um, so Jose, if you want to uh, go ahead and uh, play down a uh, renovate your roots. This is the land of my ancestry, Castelfranco in Miscano, province of Benevento, in the Campania region of Italy. A long way in many ways from my New York City home. Generoso, bisnono. My father's parents were born here more than a hundred years ago. As a matter of fact, my grandmother was born right here, number 12, Dodici, Via Ospedale. I'm Valerie Delia, and this is Renovate Your Roots, the show for people who want to feel right at home in their DNA. There are many Southern Italian villages like mine, with dozens of abandoned homes, lost to time, earthquakes and lack of jobs. So I'm looking for signs. Vendasi here, Vendasi there, Vendasi everywhere. And they're practically giving them away. Here in Castelfranco, there's quite an inventory of available homes for sale. And they range from move in ready to, well, something like this, which in dialect, we say it's scashad. And that just means it's a total wreck. Oh. Look at this, is like an old wine barrel. It's more like a farm space. 
beautiful floor. You don't need to do anything. I'm focusing my search right here in the historic center, the Centro Storico, because it has the most abandoned homes and the most promise. Ciao, Bobby. I have my eye on three houses, all requiring quite a bit of reno. If this is non-weight bearing, and it probably is because it's an interior wall, you can take this down and you can recreate the entryway, just blow out that yeah. that cement and that'll be your entry. What sets our village apart from the surrounding towns is that it feels a palpable pull from thousands of Italian Americans like me who have strong ancestral ties. We even share roots with a famous symphony orchestra conductor. Maestro Antonio Papano not only gives concerts in the town's piazza, but teaches master classes in a brand new music school dedicated to his dad, who was born here. Join me as I find my heritage home and set out to live the way my paternal grandparents left it at the turn of the 20th century. And since it takes a village to buy a house, you'll meet my brother Dan. Much better shape than I thought it would be. And cousin Carmela, supported by a revolving cast of characters, as we take you through the process of buying, restoring, and navigating all the challenges that a purchase like this presents. Lorenzo. I'll work with the best contractors to renovate my new old house, who will help me develop an Italian immersion community for others who want to be part of this ancestral adventure, living la dolce vita. And when I'm done, I'll help you locate your DNA digs, wherever in the world they may be. And remember that there is no stronger foundation than the one that is grounded in the roots of our ancestry. That just makes me smile. I think <laughs> <Me too. laughs> in so many ways, Italy to me and in my village, it's it's humorous and it's beautiful. And um, you saw uh, some of the people who are going to be part of that. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, Daniel and Nick in some way will be involved uh, as we go through this process. Sure. And yes, and um, the, some of the things we were talking about. So you saw me there in the municipio, right, with the dusty books and, and finding out, you know, where did my grandparents live? And uh, so I always think that's an adventure in itself. Absolutely. And, uh, yep. And uh, my brother, Dan, who's not uh, yet on this uh, comment thread, when you heard him say, oh, well, there's a beautiful staircase. That was one home that we went into that is move in ready. And you're not going to believe it, but it was about... Seven thousand dollars. That's insane. So, like to me, the private market is better than the Casa Uniuro because there's so many restrictions and there's so many laws and there's so many rules to follow. And you're thinking if you just want to move into this village, it's in the Centro Storico, the historic center, for about that amount, maybe you know less than ten, and you're in. And yeah. Uh, yeah. But my question is. I feel very strongly about that, but will somebody not from our village feel that way about uh, it? I, I feel that you need to have a connection to this place to move into a place like Pastor Franco. Well, I think that's going to help if you've got a connection that's so obviously real and passionate that it, it it's obvious when you speak, Val, and when we look at that video that you have a connection that uh, is a real one. Um, whenever anyone's got a connection like that to any kind of place, uh, not only is it going to uh, help things run more smoothly, um, but the local people are going to appreciate that as well because family and connections and, and is so important to Italians. And I think um, that's what you want, correct, right? Don't you want that? You want to feel you will become a part of our family. And I can say for certain when we bring people um, on our roots trip, once in a while there is this wild card of people who maybe were just friends from high school that are on that trip and they really get it. They they understand the, and you become family once, once you're there. And um, I wanted to go to some questions and we back it up. Uh, let's see. Let's go down. Uh, Regina, Regina De Simone, who is someone I have not yet met in my life, but through DNA, I know that she's also a cousin. And she says, where do you find these properties online? Websites? Who would be the best person to contact to negotiate a deal? Let's start um, with uh, Nick. Yeah, so there are 
uh, many programs. So thank you all. There are many programs of uh, uh, this one year of houses. Uh, however, as you said, um, usually people tend to prefer properties that are ready for sale. There are amazing prices uh, um, you can, for, for below price you can for sale. Now, I have to admit, that, frankly, that when people come to me as, as an attorney, as a lawyer, they have usually already found the property. And so I would uh, uh, probably refer this to Daniel um, as probably he's more involved into the uh, during the uh, property hunting stage and the research stage. Um, I can only say anecdotally that uh, mm. usually I've heard that people uh, look on website like uh, Getaway or Immobiliare.it and things like that. But uh, more than that, once again, when they cut, come to me, it is not to get advice where, about where to buy, but about the, the property that they have already chosen. So, Daniel, perhaps yeah. you, you can provide some more information about that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But I've worked with Nick before as well. When people, the first time they see a contract, normally it's a good idea to speak to someone who knows about Italian contracts inside and out. And that's what Nick does and is, is uh, uh, fully qualified to do. Um, but there is, there is a website, for example, you might have heard of it. It's actually called Casa number one, Casa1Euro.it which is nothing to do with me or anyone personally that I know, but some people have created that and at least they provide a, a database or a snapshot of the different regions where you can find uh, one euro houses and the different schemes or different communes, at least to get yourself, do yourself with some research online. I found that was a, something of a resource. Um, but, but I just want to pick up too again and what Nick was saying about bribing, buying privately and what you mentioned. Um, Val, there's no substitute for going to the place, looking around. Maybe you see some of these one euro houses, but maybe then you also see, you know, a, a vendita sign over there, which mm -hmm. is from someone that is not registered with the community to sell it specially. Maybe the price isn't even mentioned and you just, you, you might be able to contact them, make an inquiry and find out, you might find something, as you said, that's livable or maybe only requires 10 or 15,000 to make it uh, livable which could be just as much a, a, an option or a faster option to renovate, mind you, than a one euro house, which could well be rudine, almost as they say, or ruins, um, <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is quite often what you're gonna find and you may need to spend a significant amount to get it up to the level of the other one you're looking at that you're buying at a discount because the owner wants to get rid of it, right? Well, we can talk through, yes, we can talk through that as um, as Jose shows us some uh, some ruins. And, and this is in a Casa Un Euro village, very close to Castel Franco called um, Zungoli. And, and I visited there about a year ago uh, with Carmela and uh, our friend uh, Sabrina. And it's just another idea of, um, what what you can do but look at look at the state of this look at the state of, of the wall <laughs> that is that is for sure skashad as we say in dialect <laughs> you know it's just yeah. falling yeah. apart you know exactly um and let me just also look down at a couple of our other uh questions coming in and just a comment from linda chapley who is uh, a friend from high school uh, with Italian roots as well. Imagine the revitalization of the countryside in a few years. Very happy for Italy, um, smart policy. Yes, agreed, um, Linda. And my um, my cousin, believe it or not, I have another cousin, Gina Caposi guy. Gina has not yet been to Castelfranco. She lives in Florida on the, um, the east coast of Florida and she is a real estate agent there. And she says, hi Val, is there a list of properties that are available presently? And is there a plan to put a list together of possible properties that may become available moving forward? I know that you guys have um, have covered that uh, to an extent, but if there's anything else that you want to add about that, you know, as things develop and as more places are put on the market. Yes, I think you're right. If you start with the, you, the best source is the local community themselves. So you can understand from websites like Casa Unero Punto uh, IT where the places are that are, they're available then but then you should get in contact with them and even just a simple email to the contact on the website will surely they'll, they'll, I'm sure they'll be happy to share with you a list of the current available places I think that would be the most reliable 
source rather than something from another source that might be second or third hand or a bit out of date. So I would recommend dealing direct with the community if you can. Okay, and Mike Palatiello, we're having a lot of people chime in who have a lot of vowels in their name. And uh, Mike is also a friend from uh, high school and uh, welcome Mike. And I, I think that you probably recognized my grandma Delia who lived on the same street in Trumbull, Connecticut um, as, your, uh, as your parents did. And your question is, are there prior tax or other liabilities that need to be assumed? And I think that you both could uh, chime in on that one. So Nick, if you want to get started, sure. go ahead. Yes. Oh yes, yeah, sure. In, in in Italy, it's um it's pretty different than the U.S. Uh, when it comes to taxes, because uh, taxes, property taxes, are personal, and so uh, when you when you buy property, you buy just a property unless the taxes are so gigantic that the municipality or what whatever the uh, uh, tax office has uh, put a lien on the property so usually a, a title check will, will do it so you do a title check if the piece is clean there are no problems and you don't have any you don't have to do any further particular investigation to be uh uh to, to be free of concerns like tax concerns so liabilities is the same should the property be neglected as and had uh, should the property had caused um issues like crumbling walls uh, let's say um ruining a car or hitting a person or something like that that would be personal liability of the owner if the owner is known but if you buy that property you don't carry the uh liability you don't assume the liability of the old or the previous owner so it's a pretty uh clean slate and daniel yes look i'd agree with that there's um, if there's any issues um, outstanding, the, the Comune likely would have dealt with them. And you, you're, as Nick said, um, he's more qualified than, than I as a, as a lawyer here to talk about uh, assuming liabilities, but there are, there, there's none that get passed or transferred through. I think there's initial council tax you've got to pay, pay when you buy uh, the property in the beginning. When you sign a contract with the Comune to buy something for one euro or have it transferred to you, They'll, they'll be very clear in all the terms and conditions. They normally include some initial local council taxes. We're not, we're not talking a lot of money. Okay, because I was going to say, those are like the Casa Una Euro program is really uh, well, um, I guess, organized, where just Valerie going into the municipio with Carmela <laughs> trying to get information. God bless Carmela with, you know, with her translation skills to help me through this. Um, so what about somebody, you know, who is is like me actually even going somewhere where they don't even know that particular village? You know, I've, I'm lucky that I have a head start in my own ancestral village, but I think it, it takes a lot of uh, moxie to get out there and to try to talk to these people in the municipio. Yeah, well, normally that's prior to these. Uh, well, like every you know, ninety-eight percent of transactions is is with a real estate agent and a and a private seller and a, and a lawyer or someone. Anyway, it's not direct with the the comune. The comune is only involved because of this program, right? They, they don't normally get involved in private transactions. You see, so we're talking still about a small percentage of property that's sold in Italy by via these programs. So normally, if I was going to buy and buy from another private seller. I don't have to engage the local community necessarily directly on anything, thankfully, okay. until probably almost I've already bought the property. It's more important, in fact, to deal with the notary or the notaio in Italy, which, of course, is required for every single transaction uh, and who represents the government in making sure that title is transferred know. correctly. Yeah. Yes, that you, our uh, mayor, who was just voted out of office, he was also the notaio uh, that, that we went to at one point years ago. And I think I gave him a hundred euro for, I'm not sure what, um, but now he's out of office. So I have to start the whole process <laughs> over again. Um, so for, for me, I, the thing that I laughed about is there, there were no real estate agents. It was, you know, Vendisi here, Vendisi there, Vendisi everywhere with just a phone number. And the funniest thing was you call that phone number and then somebody would say, oh, well that person lives in Australia. So then you'd have to call them. So it was like telephone tag, trying to even get the information. And, and I'm laughing about it now, but when it gets serious, it gets a little frustrating. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Well, that can happen without an agent, and 
uh, to me, I you know, it's it might sound obvious, but I think there's good reason why agents are not involved in this process. If you're selling a property worth one euro and they normally work on a percentage commission, <laughs> yeah, not, yeah. Yeah, right. uh, I, I would expect I would expect yeah. them to establish a flat fee. Oh, sorry. I, yeah, I would expect them to establish a flat fee at that point. You know, like uh, you know, some, and sometimes they do. Uh, in my experience, at least for properties that are under 100,000 euros, there is a 3,000 plus VAT, which is 20% flat fee. So you usually, if you want the assistance of um, an intermediary, an agent uh, to do some legwork, uh, they, they charge it this flat 3,000 plus VAT. And however, I'm not sure how many agents will be interested in taking on a job like that because one euro homes are extremely challenging, extremely challenging, unless you have the owner and everything else is already set but uh yeah okay and thank you guys and um I'll, let's just go through a couple of these comments and i want to just urge um our viewers to just post a comment for us because you've got this expertise um right at your fingertips now and um we'd love to have you ask more questions of nick and uh, daniel and just some comments um, and uh, Linda said, please post some of these links mentioned. And I realized that Jose has been doing that. And uh, thanks so much, Jose, for being right on top of that. And uh, Debbie Antignani Inglese, no, that couldn't be more Italian. Debbie is from my hometown of Trumbull, Connecticut. She loves Italy, of course. And uh, great video from Nancy Cavalieri Fisher. Thank you, Nancy. Rest for to finish. We but neither can I. I can't wait to start it. I'm just hoping that's the question that I have. Um, it seems like the state of emergency in Italy has been extended until uh, January. It, so does what does that mean exactly? Does that mean Americans aren't going to be able to fly over until then, or are we? I'm I'm just confused about it all. So, so Nick, do you want to uh, if I may, state of emergency? yeah, 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 happily. Uh, so yeah, basically, um, the government wants a little bit more power to, uh, be able to enforce more quickly, more promptly and more appropriately as necessary, the, uh, coronavirus spread. So, uh, being, um, uh, the emergency, uh, when the good parliament approves the states of emergency, basically the government can issue decrees that have the same, uh, authority as law and uh, the same value as law. So uh, it doesn't mean necessarily that the Americans are going to be banned automatically. However, the government has the authority to establish whether and ways are going to be banned, what citizens, what uh, under what requirements and so forth. And uh, mm -hmm. um, I want just to, to, to uh, reassure the viewers that uh, since March, people who had a business interest with Italy uh, have been able to travel to Italy. It has been not easy, it's been challenging, but it is possible uh, to meet the requirements. Uh, we have assisted many, many people who traveled from this to Italy uh, with odds, obviously. Uh, you might have a visa, you might have a home, you might have a business, as I said, or other reasons. So. Um, there are ways to to go to Italy. It's not as easy, and uh, and and I have to say it. I've seen also many people who were so passionate, almost like you, Val, that who um, were so committed, who actually visited their uh, visited homes just uh, through WhatsApp or other uh, phone apps uh, through a local agent, and they placed an offer and even purchased without ever going to Italy. This has um, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess after, you know, the lockdown months in, in the U.S., after March, April, May, people had gone through all the possible rehab and, and remodeling their homes in the U.S. They had no more remodeling to do. They wanted to start a different country project. <laughs> At least that's what I experienced where I was um, in Pennsylvania, you know. Uh, Home Depot yeah. was out of stock. <laughs> like, everything was out of stock. So I guess they decided to start remodeling overseas. <laughs> Well, here's a question but, uh, talking about yeah. Home Depot, and this is a question that has always come up with me too. There's no Home Depot near Castle Franco. And uh, Gina um, Caposi guy asking, how long does it take to get plumbing supplies, cabinets, counters, all things needed for reno? Are there local renovators, etc.? Dan? Well, that there's, uh, if Nick's had personal uh, experience with renovating in Italy, have you, Nick? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually going then, through some now. <laughs> then he's the best to answer that okay. question. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so yeah. So there are a couple of things. So now there's the 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 great thing is that you can find uh, like I don't want to say why going to Home Depot because of course it's so convenient. Uh, local uh, carpentry and uh, mason jobs is so affordable, and you can get something done unique to your style, to your taste, to your w desire for. It's prices that are so much more affordable than what you would even imagine would be possible in, in the US that, uh, yes, it takes a little bit of time, but uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, you cannot get it off the shelf. But when you get it and when you have set it up in your house, done, you know, with, you know, to your taste and uh, resembling your idea and perhaps with some references to your roots and things like that, uh, you know, I saw in, in that picture, uh, in that video, the um, that uh, uh, music um, orchestra director had a a, a plate. It was a um, uh, cool. it was a carved stone. It was uh, probably hand carved and uh, with, with engraving. You know, and uh, and that's the type of stuff that that you get in Italy. You get artisans who will go there spend the entire day and then 40 bucks for a day of work and you know especially in small villages and they are happy or you 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 know it's 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 to me that is small villages of Italy if you think that you can fit a cabinet in a uh, one of those homes with crazy curvy ceilings or things like that you might have a hard time <laughs> doing that well, that, uh, thank you for pointing out our, our very own maestro. This will come as no surprise. He's my fourth cousin also. So, <laughs> and oh my so just I know about that. Okay, yes. so let's go down the list again. Okay, people are asking about um, contractors. How difficult is it to get reliable contractors? How difficult is it to get good contractors? It can be a challenge here. And, and I just want to say, no, they, they just have to be cute right? They don't have to be good. You're spending a lot of time with them. No, just kidding. What do you think of, of that? How will we to get the good contractors? Well, this is one of the reasons why this, uh, uh, the one euro programs exist, right? It's because when thousands and thousands of young people have left these small villages and the economy is struggling, you've got local carpenters and tradespeople and builders uh, that don't have work. So this, the Comune has done a fantastic thing, obviously, for their, they're trying to revive their economies and their, and their, and their activity, and therefore the, the local contractors um, are able to work again. And, and perhaps, you know, when they've been gradually going from being full-time down to part-time, down to a few hours or one job a year, now they maybe have got two or three or four jobs on and, and can maybe entice their cousins and others that are in the, in the trade to, to work with them. So I think that, there's the more demand for work from these schemes means there's um, more supply. Um, and, and I think that's what you're finding right now. Of course, supply is not unlimited. So it depends on how successful the scheme is in the particular town that you're, you're in, I would suggest. Okay, and Leslie Faraci Gremilion. Hi, ciao, Leslie. Um, thank you for joining our, uh, our webinar. Um, do some of these towns have a property management company, someone to keep an eye on the property until you could move in? They do. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I wouldn't say that every town itself has a resident. It, de it depends. They might be want someone within a region that's covering several towns, though, or even in a in a larger town or a city that incorporates your small town as well, which would have a property management company for sure. Yeah. Okay, and I can't believe that we have just 10 minutes left uh, in this yeah. live stream, and there is a um, an area that I wanted to cover, and this is. Uh, in Nick's uh, court. And Nick, this would be about obtaining citizenship through your purchase, okay? I cannot become a citizen uh, automatically because when my father was born to Italian parents, my Italian parents had naturalized as American citizens. So I've been told the only way I can get citizenship is to purchase a home. Is that true? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's this is a question that comes uh, that, that 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 I get pretty often. And uh, so, the, do I need a property 
do I need to own a property to get citizenship? So do I, if I buy a property, would it be easier for me to get citizenship or even vice versa sometimes? If I have my citizenship, is it easier to buy a property? I get both of them. So, um, and, and there is an angle in each of them. So to answer your question, when um, the, 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 the typical, the, the name of the requirement that you were talking about to get Italian citizen, citizenship is basically through bloodline, which in Italian, actually, we, they, they use the Latin expression, Uris sanguinis. So if the bloodline is interrupted through naturalization that occurs before the child is born, you are not entitled to claim Italian citizenship. The child that is born after the naturalization is not entitled to claim Italian mm. citizenship unless that person moves to Italy, manages to uh, become a resident, a registered resident, which is a concept very different than the residents in the US. So I'll get to it in a, in a second if we have time. And after that person has been registered as a resident for three years, then automatically it is possible to naturalize Italian instead of waiting 10 years because 10 years is the, the, the typical naturalization process uh, to claim Italian citizenship for Italians. However, they say, after all, you had Italian ancestors. Yes, one of them naturalized before you were born or before your father, your mother was born. So we want to give you a chance. If you are really passionate, really committed and are a resident for three years, well, we'll give you the Italian citizenship back to you. So um, it doesn't mean that you have to stay in Italy for three years. I was going to say, you can't it's because you can't. You need to, to come back home. Resident. Yeah. So, okay. If you want and live in the U.S. while you're a resident, what does being a resident imply? Uh, the, one of the requirements is the, the most challenging for, for most people is to get a visa because in order to register as a resident, you cannot just show up at the commune and say, hey, I would like to become a resident. In Italy, to become a resident, basically it means that you have to file an application and they and even italians have to do this so you find an application and they have to record your name into a register of residents so in every comune in every municipality of italy there is a big register now of course it is electronic where they have a list of all the people who live within that commune uh, territory if you move because change your job, you get married, whatever, within Italy even, you have to go to the next comune where you move to and you have to become a resident of that comune. It is actually a legal requirement to declare your new residence. So a non-Italian person, in order to apply to become a resident, needs to have proper immigration status. So either if you are a EU citizen, it's easy because you travel freely, like in this in the US, between, between states, if you wanna travel, if you wanna establish your residence to Florida, you can just drive there and start living there, right? The same is within Europe. Mm -hmm. However, with, with the US is different. If you want to go and become a resident of your little town where your family is from, you have to go through Italian consulate, unless you're married to an Italian which that will bring up an exception, an exception. But uh, if you are not, you would have to go through the, the typical, the typical process would involve going through the consulate, file an application at the consulate um, for one of the very few visa available for Americans who um, usually plan to pursue this type of, of, of strategy, um, which is usually the elective residence visa. And you apply for the visa, which is not easy, is expensive, and it takes a few months. Then you get the visa, and then you can go to Italy, get the permit to sojourn, the permit to stay. And once you get this permanent resident card, then you can apply to become a resident. And after you are a resident for three years and file Italian taxes and everything, you can get mm -hmm. your citizenship. So now to to um, to go back. What does being, why have I said all this? If you have a house, obviously you can meet more easily the requirement of registering as a resident. If you don't own a house, however, you can rent a house. So if you either show the commune a lease agreement or a property title in your name, the commune will be satisfied, of course, granted you have proper immigration status. Is that clear? 
This is such amazing information that honestly, I think it requires us going back and listening to every second of this because that is such good and it's detailed information. <laughs> Sorry, no, I, honestly, my head is just spinning thinking, oh my God, I have so much to do. Um, and we're just getting down to the end of the show. But if there are any last questions, we have five minutes. Um, we would love to uh, hear from our uh, visitors uh, today on this live can I, stream. Can I correct yes. something? Go ahead, Daniel. Yep. And I'm not going to correct Nick. I'm not even going to attempt that. But I have to correct something that I said earlier, right? Okay. And I don't want to mislead uh, people. But I mentioned the website, right? Um, yeah. I, I got it wrong slightly. I'm sorry. The, the one I mentioned is actually for one specific program in Musomeli in Sicily, which was called I, – I remember being astounded by – I found that maybe two years ago, and I thought, wow, someone's got this name. They must have all the programs. But don't be misled. That one, Casa – one euro punto it is just for that town of muso Meli oh. in, in sicily okay. but instead the one that has a list of most of the or all of the programs is actually called one euro so okay. it's easier and it's in it's all english i suppose so one the, the number one euro houses.com and at the very least in there you know you can get a list of the regions and see broadly on an italian map where, where those schemes are and how much more expensive is it to look in, to buy a home on the uh, on the waterfront on the seaside coastline towns? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, well, I mean, because uh, it depends on the characteristics of the property itself. I don't think there's a general rule that I could apply to the whole of Italy, um, but uh, certainly there's some areas that are much more in demand than others where you will pay a lot more in square meters. Uh, price per square meter for the house if it's for example in Positano on the Amalfi Coast yeah, or in yeah. or Sardinia or yeah. uh, 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 even in uh, Lake Como or something like that but there'll be a, plenty of other seaside resorts where you can still get value for money for sure or even just a couple of kilometers from the sea with a view yeah. to the sea you can get incredible value for money at the moment I mean that's one thing we shouldn't forget despite the renovation story in the Casa One Euro houses, Italy, in my opinion, is incredible value right now. And this is why I've always got demand from Australia, from the UK, from America, from South Africa, because people say, hey, I could buy a second or a th third investment property down by the beach where I live in my city in, in there, but it's going to cost me half a million dollars or something, or, or at least, you know, 400,000. Whereas in Italy, you can have an incredible piece of, of this beautiful country for much, much less. And I think it's been value for money for, for at least the last 10 years. And, and with, unfortunately, the crisis we're going through, I see that continuing. Well, we can get to Bari in about an hour and a half from Castelfranco, so I'm sticking to my guns. And I am going to be <laughs> buying in Castelfranco. Um, I think, Jose, we never put the map up, did we? No, we didn't. We should let's see it. if we, let's end the show that way. And uh, we're going to put the map up. What is your number? Do you see, uh, there's the map of Italy. And those of you, um, I'd like you to comment and tell, uh, tell us where you would like to buy your home in Italy. And mine is number 15, of course. That's the uh, Campania region. And that's where my heart is. And that's where my home will be. So mm -hmm. let's see. How about if, if, if you guys could uh, buy out of where you are right now, where would it be? Wow. Well, if uh, it was me, I've been. We've been talking recently about Tuscany and, and Toscana because uh, we absolutely love it there. So I guess that's number nine on this on this map, um, and it's just got so much to offer. You have got the beach and the sea, but you, who can go past uh, Tuscany? I'm sure millions of Americans fell in love with uh, under the Tuscan sun. Isn't that where this all started? That's now? where it all started. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> but it's it's right. We're gonna not end it. <laughs> That's right. We, <laughs> that I'm was not it. I give it. her a lot of credit. Exactly. So yeah, we're putting up some of the numbers uh, from our viewers. Uh, Linda, sixteen, and uh, and nineteen. Oh, okay, she wants to do uh, do Sicily. How about twenty? Uh, Sardinia. That's always been appealing to me as well. And uh, Sarah, we've got uh, nineteen again. Okay, Sicily is very popular. 
And one through 19, I love it. <laughs> Excellent, exactly. Well, then, you know, you have a lot of choices right there. And uh, let's see as we go, we go along. This has been a lot of fun, um, you guys. And just in the last minute, I wanted to ask a very selfish question. They say that you can't get over to Italy unless you have essential work. Do you think um, developing a documentary that benefits tourism <laughs> and real estate sales can qualify for mm -hmm. essential work? And who do I talk to about that? Because I want to get over there as soon as possible. Uh, talk to me. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, yeah definitely. Um, definitely. Yeah. I'm we, back. we uh, as I said, uh, we have this uh, COVID travel program. Uh, it okay. is not so much if you qualify, it is if you had the proper paperwork in order because the Italian government has been changing the requirements every two, three days, literally. Even when I flew, yes, they were not, uh, when I was at the airport, consider this, there's nobody at check-in, there's nobody at custom control, there's nobody anywhere. You are almost alone on your airplane. So they have, they will give okay. you all the attention they can. And they are so scared. They told me literally, we're afraid we'll, we can be fired if we mess it up, but they don't have always the most updated documents. So, however, if you have the updated documents and everything and you know what you are talking about, you will go through. And uh, definitely filming a documentary uh, would, would, would meet the requirements, I believe, yeah. We saved the best for last. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I'm going to close. We can it. do it. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Leslie uh, Faraci Gravillion. She said, I'm a certified tour guide, tour director. Can I come? Love it. Yeah. We'll have to talk about our route trips, our roots trips in Castelfranco because we actually also travel around um, the region. And Carmela ends it. She says, uh, Kindici, obviously, of course, Carmela, right? It's always oh, number 15 for us, right, in Castelfranco. And I can't wait to, to see you, Carmela, and your whole family. And thank you, guys. You were phenomenal, Nick and Daniel. And uh, can we once again uh, put, put uh, Nick and Daniel's coordinates for social media so that uh, people can get in touch with them if they have any more questions? There we go. And that'll do it. And, of course, Jose, come back on and say hi to everybody, say goodbye. Bye everyone. <laughs> you did a wonderful job of, of making this happen. I really, Thank really you. appreciate it. And uh, yes, you're welcome, you're welcome. Thank and you guys, uh, yeah. thanks Val, I appreciate it. Thank you it. so much for having us. Absolutely, you know that we will be in touch going forward for better or worse, right? <laughs> Great, indeed, look forward <laughs> It'll to it. It'll be all better, yes. all good. Yeah. All right. Stay all well. Right. Now for now, everyone stay right. well, very Thank important. You. Everybody stay well, wear those masks. Indeed. Okay, bye-bye.